Glory. Woo. Bless your name, God. Oh, yes, God. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory. Yes, God. Hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord this morning, people of God. Woo. I love God. He's good to us. Good morning, man of God. Woo, Jesus. God is so good. Woo, he is a holy God. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Woo, my God. God is faithful. He's a holy God. Oh, Jesus, God, I bless your name. We come to bask in his presence this morning. We come to press in this morning. We come to set the atmosphere for our day. God, I bless your name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Woo, Jesus, God, I bless your name. You're holy, God. Woo, Jesus. Thank you, God. Woo, glory. He's a holy God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God, I bless your name. You're good to us, God. You're merciful and you are a kind God. Woo, glory, 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 glory. Woo, no matter what your situation is, you better remember that there is a holy God sitting on the throne. Yes, we are. We are still. I'm going to call you after the broadcast because I got reminded of something, so. God is so faithful, y'all. Woo, glory. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I bless your name. You're good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Glory, 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 glory. Listen, people of God. I love God. He's good to us. Woo, he is merciful and he is a kind God. He is loving. Good morning, people of God. There is a word from the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Make sure you share the broadcast. Good morning. Texas is in the house. Good morning, people of God from all over. My God. Good morning. Hallelujah. There is a word from the Lord this morning because some of us have become discouraged some of us have become um, weighted down with the pressure of the assignment for the season, whatever that thing is. Some of us have um, really fallen into a, oh, I'm trying my best, but I don't quite know, my God. And there is a word from the Lord this morning. God, I bless your name. You're good to us, God. Oh, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. My God, we're going to go to um, Isaiah this morning. Lord, have your way. Have your way this morning, oh, holy God. Oh, Jesus, God, I bless your name. Listen, faith is so important. I am well. How are you this morning? Thank you for asking. Um, faith is the most important thing that you have. I promise you, I, I talk about it all the time because it's important. None of the other things matter. At the end of the day, when you get in a hard situation, that's why I tell you all the time, I'm not worried about glitz, glam, fashion. I'm not worried about any of those things because when you get in a hard situation, you don't have time to put on a three-piece suit, a big hat, your church girdle. You don't have time to put on your good high heels, your eyelashes. Your... Baby, when you get up against a wall, when you hit those hard times, when you hit the uncomfortable situations, you got to know how to press into the spirit of God. You got to know what do I believe about God? What do I believe about me? What do I believe? It is the most important thing that you have. Perilous times are coming. Listen, that mask, that was not all that, the, the corona, it was under the corona title. But at the end of the day, it was only preparation. The Bible says in the last days, you will have to accept the mark of the beast. If you, if you don't accept the mark of the beast, you won't be able to buy or sell. Buy or sell, shop, feed your family, get the things that you need. 
mask mark mask mark i'm not saying that the mask was the mark i'm saying that the mask was the preparation you can't go in the store without the mask if you have not ascribed in your heart if you have not made solid in your heart that god will provide for me if provision and the situations that come and, and that that come to test what you think that you need, if it rattles you, baby, you you gotta get a grip. You have to believe God. It it, it it's not going to get prettier. We gotta know what we believe about God. We have to believe that if He is for us, He is greater than the world against us. This thing is real. Then we got the vaccine. That's the next thing that's on the list. People are they're saying that you can't work at your job unless you get this vaccine. Y'all, we're being prepared. That's all that we're doing. We're being prepared. You got to know who you believe, what you believe in, who is your rescue, where are you going to hang your hat? My God, where are you going to settle the dust of your feet? Even when facing death, come on, people of God, even when facing death, you have to get strong in your heart and in your faith. I don't care about the rest of that is just garbage. We're just all of that's just extra. It's all just vanity. It's all unnecessary. We have to know what we believe. This is why you're going to be in hard situations. You're not being punished because your children are acting crazy. You're not being punished because your wife is acting crazy. You're not being punished because your family is not agreeing with you. You have to get rooted and grounded in what you believe about God because your faith is going to be tested. We got to know. We have to know without a shadow of a doubt, my God, that God is going to provide for me. He's going to provide a way for me. He's going to provide, the Bible says, he's going to provide a way in the wilderness. It might not look like it's going to get any better in your marriage, but I promise you, you're going to have to hold on. You, Something has to be your training. Something has to be your training ground. You have to learn to stand in the face of rejection. Something has to be your training ground. You got to learn how to tell the truth if it's comfortable, if it's not comfortable, if it's popular, if it's not popular. Something has to be your training ground about what you believe about God. Your circumstances are not coming to punish you. They're coming to press you, to push you towards God. Stop crying. Dry your tears. Child of God. The trouble will not outlast the beautiful promises of God. Come on, people of God. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, it comes in the morning. I need you to get a new grip. Okay? I don't know what your circumstances you're facing, but you better believe God in this season like you never have. Let every hard situation, now that we know, we come to calibrate. That's what I love to do. Come to adjust your thinking. Get a new grip. All right. All right, I got a situation ahead of me, but it's only to push me towards Christ, push me towards purpose, push me towards what I believe. It's coming to strengthen my faith. Good morning. When you go to the gym and you're you're working out and you're bench pressing or you're lifting or whatever exercise you're doing, it hurts. But we have to be trained in righteousness, trained in it. That means you're not going to know all the nooks and the crannies. You have to be trained in righteousness. It's not just going to come, I don't, you know, just fall out of the sky. No, the Bible says faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, you got to get you a war song. I don't know what your war song is. Good morning. But for me in this season, this song right here, baby, it's been blessing me front, back, going, coming, listen, and I'm just right here. It's called The End of Me by Naomi Rain. I can't worry about nothing else. I'm not moving. I got to stand on what I know about God, what I believe about God. Whoever's with me, God bless you. Whoever's not with me, God bless you. You can't worry about none of the extra things that are going on around you. If God be for you, God, I bless your name. Come on in the room. If God be for you, he is greater than the world against you. You have to keep your hand to the plow. The Bible says, 
anyone who puts their hand to the plow and then looks back, you're not fit. You're not in shape for the kingdom of God. You're not in shape. While I was on sabbatical, the Lord gave me a dream. Woo, Jesus. God, I bless your name. Oh, God, I bless your name. Woo, glory. I'm not moving. That part just, it gets me in the song. I'm not moving. I don't know about you, baby. I got to stay in position. Where else I'm going to go? I'm like Peter. When Peter told Jesus, where else am I going to go? There's no other place. Oh, glory. I love God. I don't have anywhere else to go. I don't know where you your options, but I don't have anywhere else to go. God, I bless your name. Oh, glory. I love God. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, God. Let the presence of the Lord calibrate your thoughts, your heart, your emotions this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love God, y'all. He is, woo, glory, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, you have to tune in to what the spirit of the Lord is saying in this season. You ain't got to tune in here if you don't want to. You can tune in wherever you want to. But while I was on sabbatical, the Lord gave me a dream. And in the dream, I was I was hired on as a um, I was hired on by a school to uh, oversee their gym program to reconstruct their gym program. And so I walk in the school. And when I walk in the school, I go uh, in the gym and they had a picture hanging up. And the picture was all the students, all the gym kids. And they was throwing up gang signs. And so they were actually in gym at that time. And so I walked in the gym and they were in class. They were doing their working out or whatever they were doing. And I stopped the whole program. And I said, listen, I am new. I have been hired to be over the program. Not, I'm not your teacher. I'm over the teacher. I came to reconstruct the program because what's going on, it's not working out so good. And when I seen the picture, I seen y'all had on throwing up gang signs. Y'all, we're here. You're here on this gym picture. You're supposed to be representing the school and the gym, the PE class. That's all you're supposed to be representing, not your own self. And I said, anyone, we're going to take a new picture. Come on. And when we take this new picture, you're not throwing up no gang signs. You're not here on your own accord. That's ain't what you came to do. Come on in the room, people of God. I said, if there are, if you are caught doing that, there will be consequences. And then I woke up. And the Lord showed me that in that dream, listen, I've called you to be, I'm a, I've been called to lead leaders. That's why you're drawn to this ministry. I've been called to lead leaders, but a lot of people that are leaders, we, we've been, it's, it's out of whack. You, you supposed to be in here getting it fit, getting your, your faith strengthened. And we're in here learning fashion tips. We're in here making sure we look the fanciest on Sunday. We're making sure our shoes match. We're making sure, sure the pastor's suit. Didn't you wear that suit three weeks ago? Wait a minute. We're worrying about all the wrong things. Good morning. Listen, we are here to learn faith. That is all that the point of the story is. Jesus Christ and him crucified. We're not here to rep your own set. We're not here to, to do all those other things. We are here to understand what is God saying. So that I can get through a hard season. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. You have to get the word of God in you. We're going to go to, um, actually we're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Ooh, God, I bless your name. We are, we, we got to get this, y'all. We have to get this. This is just important. God, I bless your name. We're going to start in verse 14, but you must remain. That means There's no need to tell me I must remain if I'm already remaining. That means some of us are not remaining. Come on. That means some people are falling away. The Bible tells us there's going to be a great falling away just because you got saved at seven. Come on, people of God. This thing is real. I'm trying to tell y'all where, where I don't, I, I get upset when people are doing more extra stuff than preaching the word of God. This ain't about you. That's why in the dream they were throwing up gang signs. They was making it about repping they set. No, we're here. Do what you are called to do in this place. Okay, people of God. 
but you must remain. Come on, listen. Don't move. Do not move. You must remain. Stay in position, people of God. You must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. Well, what if no one taught me? No one taught me. We're going to church and we're not being taught the life of faith, how to endure hardness. It is coming. That's why we're crumbling. You want to know why you're crumbling? When everything is making you cry. When I look back at my own life and I had, I was married young. Every time he did something, baby, I was crying. Every time he cheated, I was crying. No condemnation. I'm telling you my testimony. Every time he talked to me rude, I was crying. Oh, he did. Oh, 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 oh. Baby, I didn't have, no, I went to church all my life. All my life, all my life I went to church, but no one was teaching me, you're going to hit hard seasons. God, I bless your name. Let me give you the tools on how to get through, how to persevere. You must learn to endure hardness like a good soldier. You must remain faithful to the things that you've been taught. You know they are true. For you know you can trust those who taught you. A lot of us are struggling because we can't even trust our pastor. Pastors is trying to sleep with you. They're too busy trying to be fashion icons. They're too busy trying to be famous. They're too busy trying to do everything but spread the gospel. We have to get back to the basics. What are we here for? What are we here for, people of God? God, I bless your name. You have been taught the holy scriptures from childhood. They have been given to, they have given you wisdom. They have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Jesus Christ. Okay, we have to trust. Salvation, you only receive salvation. And I got to tell you, salvation is not one time. You need to be saved daily. God, I bless your name. You got to believe in God to be saved daily from the situations, the problems, the hard things you endure, your own thoughts, your own mind, your own uh, family members, your own financial situations and things that you're going through. Come on, people of God. God, I bless your name. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true. It this is where I okay, I don't care about none of that. Well, yes, bless God. Yes, this is so true. We we have been taught wrong in a lot of places, or or the other issue is maybe you haven't been taught wrong, you weren't taught at all. Okay, but at the end of the day, you got to get in the word of God. This is where I learned what I was going to church and I was gay the whole time in church with a whole girlfriend and a wife in the church over the children's ministry, blessing God, hands lifted in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. God, you're good. Oh, I love you. Falling out, foaming at the mouth, all of those things. Yeah, all of that. But at the end of the day, one day I opened up my Bible to Galatians 5 and 19 and it said, don't you realize that you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God with all of that sin in your back pocket? I was being entertained. I was being soothed, but I wasn't being saved. I would have went right to hell from the church because we got people saying, don't judge me. The Bible says judge righteously. Yes, you are supposed to. It says examine yourself. Baby, you better be judged. I used to say, when I was in homosexuality, I used to say all the time, I used to say, oh, I don't judge myself. That's the problem. That's why you out here doing dumb stuff. Because you're not judging yourself. Measure yourself. Measure yourself against the word of God and the spirit of God. Measure yourself. God, I bless your name. Woo, glory, 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 glory. Those of you that are on TikTok, I don't know why it keeps freezing, but if you hop over on Makeover Ministry on Facebook, it's not freezing on there. Woo, glory. All scripture is inspired 
by God. And it is use filled. It's useful. It's the best book you ever going to get. I don't care about none of that other stuff. I tell my kids all the time, you ain't in school to learn what they're teaching because half of what they're, 75% of what they're teaching goes against the Bible anyway. you just there to actually learn. You're only in school to learn how to be in the world, but not of the world. You're learning to be around people, how to interact, how to build social skills, how to stand true on what you know. That's the only reason. Listen, one of the little boys at our church, I love him, honey. He done went to school and told his teacher that she had a whole demon in her and he was trying to cast it out. And he's like, I think he is. Maybe he's about nine. <laughs> well, it's just true. If it's, if it's true, it's true. You can't get mad. He, know, he, he's learned, he has eyes that he can see. Come on, I think, but listen, he wasn't scared to take no stand. I'm trying to tell you, listen, I love children like that. I would have said, this, did, did you do your work today too? Did you cast the devil out and do your work? Bless God. Hallelujah. The word of God says, all scripture is inspired by God and useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. But if you're not getting in the word, you don't know. You got to get in the word. Get in the word and stay rooted and stay grounded so that you don't go into error. God is so faithful. Even if you do, he'll bring here. If you stay in the word, keep going back to the word. Okay, Lord, what are you saying? Okay, now that you're saying, now I read that. Now I need your spirit to break it down for me. Understand how that applies to me. I need to understand. I need to understand what are you saying? Come on, people of God. God uses it to prepare. We, we got to prepare. We got to prepare. prepare, prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Y'all, we got to get this in our heart, in our soul. You're not, life is not just going to be easy and sunshine, rainbows. Girl, it ain't going to be no hard things. It's going to be hard things. Second Timothy 2 and 3, endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. I did not know that see that suffering was going to be a part. No, just you gotta know it. Not you gotta just you find out about it. No, I just I it is going to be. We gotta teach teach that to your children young, and they won't be devastated when they hit those seasons that are hard. It don't it don't have to be your marriage, honey. It can be your um job, it can be your money, it can be your family life, it can be your own inner turmoil. There will be seasons of hardness but soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life civilian life that's on a lower rank you got to come higher there's high i've been trained i know other i know more things than the civilians know about warfare about attack about the enemy that's coming against us i am called to be a gatekeeper and to stand in the gap god i bless your name i know something that other people don't know that's what that's why you're called to be a light in dark places stop trying to run from the assignment all oh, these people honey i can't be around toxic people well but that's your assignment but you have to get strengthened in your core, in your inner man, because you were toxic once. It don't matter. We got all of this stuff. People, we trying to run. I'm trying to get around from narcissistic people, baby. All it don't matter. Well, they, they, all of those things. You're called to it. You're called to it. You have to come and be strengthened in your faith. Be strong in the Lord. Be of good courage. Learn to wipe them to. If you're going to cry, that's fine. Cry because I cried for a season. But at some point, you got to, even if and you still can cry, but keep pressing. I'm going to cry and pray. I'm going to cry and praise. I'm going to cry and press in. I'm going to cry and keep going. I'm going to cry and keep my hand to the plow. You ain't weak. You ain't weak. My God. You're not weak. The thing that the world calls weakness is actually strength. In your own flesh, you're weak. But the same power that raised Christ from the dead, it lives in you. You're not by yourself, baby. I stand. God, I bless your name. But I don't stand alone. My God, I stand. But I don't stand alone. My God. Ooh, Jesus. My God, I am my own every morning. I am 
this week will be on at 7 a.m. every morning, Eastern Standard Time this week. Who God, I bless your name. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and you won't miss anything. Who God, I bless your name. God is good, y'all. It's called Makeover Ministry. We have to stay rooted and grounded because perilous times are coming. Yes, they are already in the room. 2 Timothy 3 and 1 says, you should know this, Timothy. See, you, Timothy was being taught. This is the other problem that we're missing, y'all. The other problem is that we don't have mentors. We don't have spiritual fathers. Come on. We don't have spiritual mothers. Where are we going to learn our lessons? Someone has to come alongside you for a season to teach you and to train you. You have to get up and go to school each day. God, I bless your name. When we're coming here, we're going to school each day, just like the children. When you go to church, when you hop on a live and you know the word of God is going forth, you should have your paper and your pencil because you're going to school. It's something that's going to be said that I'm going to need. Come on, in the room. You got to take notes and then you got to go back and look at those notes. I am a big advocate for sticky notes. And if I hear something that hits my heart, I'm going to write that on a sticky note and I'm going to stick it on my wall. That's how I got delivered. Deliverance comes all different ways, people of God. It's not one way. We're limiting God. I didn't have nobody to lay hands on me. I had to walk out deliverance by the spirit of God, by the power of God, and by the truth of God's word. Come on, I had a whole mirror full of word that was just feeding me. I, I suffered from depression too many years. I suffered from depression and I would show up sad and beat down, broken and scorned and battered. But then I learned how to show up pretty depressed, pretty broken, pretty on the outside and shot crush on the inside but I got tired of people saying what's wrong with you so I just showed up pretty broken but I realized that's still not good there was one saying that walked me out of depression daily two sayings one get out of your feelings and get back to your faith I don't care how this feels. It doesn't matter about the feeling part of it. What do you know about God? Get out of your feelings and get back to your faith, people of God. The second one was, when life called roll today, did you answer? When life called roll today, did you answer? It's like being in the classroom and the Teachers say, John, here, Susan, here, you can be in the room, but you're not present. God, I bless your name. I learned how to be in a room, but not be present. I learned how to show up, but not interact. I know how to look down. If you walk and you're walking around and you're out and about, and but you're not interacting with people, you're in the room, but you're not present. You're, it's a lot of people in church. But they're not present. God, I bless your name. I promise you, listen. I'm sorry when I yell. I'm not trying to yell. I get so excited. I get so, this is intense because it's serious. We have to get a grip. Have to get a grip. We got plenty of people that are in marriages, but you're not present. We got plenty of people that are in relationships, but you're not present. We got plenty of parents that are in the house, but you're not present. You're in the room, but you're not present. My God, are you present? We have to teach our children the life of faith. 2 Timothy 3 and 1 says, You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. Okay? This is why I'm trying to tell you, you can't get out of position because it's hard. Because it, it don't matter. You're going to still hit difficult times. So especially in marriage, if I'm going to hit difficult times, the one person I'm going to hit difficult times with is the one that I love. 
My God, we're going to hit difficult times, but I love me some Batman. Come on. I love me some Batwoman. Whatever your testimony is, at the end of it, you're going to hit difficult times. I promise you. I, mm, mm, mm. God, I bless your name. That in the last days, there will be very difficult times for people will love only themselves and their money. We're here, the selfie generation. Let me take a selfie. It's all about self. It's all about what feels good to me. When someone is cheating and they're unfaithful, it's only, it's not against you. It's just because they're selfish. It doesn't have anything to do with you. Come on. It didn't mean that they didn't love you. And I know it doesn't make sense to our mind. I know. Because I've been on both sides. I've been the one that was cheated on and that, and my husband would tell me, but it's not, I still love you. I know I'm cheating, but I still love you. But I also have been the one before that cheated and said, but I still love you. And my heart really did. But listen, come on in the room, the people of God, I need y'all to understand, get this grip, because this is the thing. The Lord said, they worship me with their lips. That means they tell you they love you, but their heart is far from me. But their heart, their actions show different. But it didn't say, it said their heart is far from me. It, it, it didn't say I don't still love God. I'm doing all of these things. My heart is just, it's become distant from God. They've become distant. We've been talking about marriage. I don't know if you've been tuned into the conversation, but this, I promise you, I have been getting, I'm getting all a little, the people are starting to pop up. Because this is where we're at and we can't keep getting out of marriages. Some marriages, the Lord will tell you to leave. My last husband, the Lord told me to leave. He told because that wasn't the husband of my youth. He wasn't the one that God had ordained for me. He wasn't the one that I had listened. He don't my name, my I have never changed. I got married to my husband that is my children's father at 21. And my name is still the same. I, I got married to two other people and never changed my last name. I told him the other day, your name is still on me. I don't know where you're going, but I don't have anywhere else I can go. I'm right here. I'm right here. I ain't moving. Your name is on me. That's the same way with Jesus Christ. His name is on you. He's just waiting for you to come home. He's just, he said, hey, I know you're doing all the things. I know you out there smoking, drinking, laying up, partying. I know you're doing everything. I know you caught up. I know you're straying for a season, but at the end of the day, my name is on you. My name is on you. My God. Woo! Mm, mm, mm. God, I bless your name. I love God. I'm talking about the word and marriage because marriage is the greatest institute on the earth because it mimics how it mirrors, not mimics, it mirrors Christ and his bride. How can we talk about the word and not talk about marriage actually, y'all? Because they go together. They go together. We are his bride. The church is his bride. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back for his bride. So we, I mean, we can't, they go together. It ain't no missing it. For people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents. We're here. Ooh. My God. They will be disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. It's so true. Ooh. Help us, God. They will consider nothing sacred. Nothing is holy anymore. I was listening to Pastor uh, Stephen Darby. He blesses my soul. He's gone on to be with the Lord. But listen. I was listening to his teaching and he was talking about shame. And he said, the problem with these, with the world is there is no more shame. People are not ashamed to cheat. People want kids ain't ashamed to cuss in front of grownups. People ain't ashamed to be outside naked. People ain't ashamed to have sex in public. People ain't ashamed to be naked on social media. People ain't even having secret affairs no more. It's public. The side chick go to the church with you. Shh, there's no more shame. There's nothing sacred. There's nothing holy 
But we don't have to be so caught up because the word of God tells us. This is why you can't let people tell you the word of God ain't true. It's been translated so many times and so have the history books. But y'all still believe in slavery. Was you there? Was you there? How do you know that we come from Africa? Was you there? It's like we, we got to stop letting people tell us what we believe about God. If you believe the history book, this is our history. If you believe in uh, uh, Columbus, whatever his name was, that sailed the ocean blue, you believe in all of that? Listen. Woo! Help us, God. We got to know what we believe about God because people are rooted in ground. They ain't moving on what they believe about science. They ain't moving about what they believe. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you. They ain't moved about what they believe about uh, uh, astrology and all of this stuff. Baby, you got to stay rooted and grounded in what you believe about God in this season. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. That We're here. We're here. No self-control. It's the mark. This is how, this is why as people of God, we have to allow the fruit of the spirit of self-control to be matured in us. My 600 pound life, no self-control. Uh, all these, all the reality shows have no self-control, no self-control at your mouth. You're talking crazy, cussing out people, no self-control of your genitals. Come on in the room, people of God. Yes, I will pray before we sign off. Um, no self-control of relationship, no self-control in how you dress, no self-control in what you indulge in, no self-control. Who help us, God? They will be cruel and hate what is good. Yeah. Yes, God, it's real. It's real. We are here, y'all. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride. It's real. I seen a sign. Some people were at a gay pride thing, and the sign said, going to hell and proud of it. It just, it breaks my heart. This is why we got to stay focused, people of God. We got to stay focused and stay in the face of God like never before. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. Hmm. Help us, God. That's the thing. When it comes to surrendering your life to Christ and people love telling you that salvation is free, it's not free. It'll cost you your own life. But the issue boils down to this. I mean, I want to get in God, but I still love pleasure. God, I bless your name. I still love pleasure. God, I bless your name. I still love pleasure. That's what we're saying. When we say, I can't, I mean, I want to come to church. I want to do this. I want to so on and so forth. I want to, but I still love pleasure. I still love smoking weed. I still love masturbating. I still love lying. I still love cheating. I still love fornicating. I still love porn. I still love strip clubs. I still love pedophilia. I still love uh, pornography. I still love pleasure. We all have been there. No condemnation. I still love pleasure more than I love God. They will act religious. They will act religious. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. They share scriptures. They share live broadcasts. They come to church, but there's no power. There's no power. They speak in tongues. See, people think, oh, the Holy Ghost makes you speak in tongues. Baby, the Holy Ghost makes you live right. The Holy Ghost is your personal accountability partner. It whispers in your ear, don't you say that. Come on and do that. You know it's time to go. Put that down. Come away from that. Get your eyes out of the crack of her behind. Come on around her. Don't say that. That's too short. Now, you know your breast is hanging out. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It makes you live right. Help us, God. Help us, God. Ooh, thank you, Lord, for your word on today, God.
Thank you, God. Lord, we bless your name this morning for your holy. You're righteous, God. You are a mighty God, and there's nothing too hard for you. We come this morning repenting of our sins of omission, our sins of commission, those things that we knew were wrong, and those things that we didn't know were wrong, God. We ask that you fill us this day with your presence, with your spirit. Give us a fresh infilling this morning, God. From the top of our head to the soles of our feet so that we may live holy. We understand that holiness is not a dress. It's not no makeup. It's not a church. Holiness is your spirit lived out in and through us, God. We thank you for your love this morning. Your word says perfect love. It cast out all fear. Whenever the fears of life come rushing in, God, we ask that you allow your love to remind us that you're with us. That we're not standing alone in the fight. We are not by ourselves, but that you are with us. Your word tells us be strong and be courageous. May we do that this day, God. When we face the obstacles that are ahead of us, the trials, the testings of our faith, oh great God. May our, may our day give glory to you, God. Prepare our hearts and our minds for our day, God. Lead us and guide us. We believe that your protection is with us, God. That your love surrounds us and that we are not by ourselves. We ask that you allow we ask that you be with our family on today, God. Our natural family and our family of faith, God. Help us to remain faithful to what we know about you. Help us to be an example, to be a light in dark places. So that our husbands can see Christ through us, so that our wives can see Christ through us. So that our children can see Christ through us. So that our neighbors can see Christ through us. So that our, our co-workers can see Christ through us. So that the, the people in the world can see you through us, God. We may be the only Bible someone reads today, God. And those that are tuning in, that have been tuning in to the marriage series, whose marriages are broken, disjointed, I ask that you give the one that is standing in the gap strength on today, God, to keep standing, to rebuild the wall of righteousness in their family so that the land will be protected, to stand in the gap. And we ask, Lord, that you draw the one that is lost, bring them home to know you, God. When they know you, they know how to treat us. God, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord. You're holy. We ask that you allow healing virtue to go out today for our hearts and our minds, our emotions, and our bodies. Even those that have been tormented by church hurt and they've been let down by spiritual parents, our mentors in the gospel. Help them to remember, God, that their life is in your hand. And no weapon formed against them shall prosper. They went through it and they survived it. And they can let go. And they can forgive. And they learned what not to do to other people. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We bless your name. We love you on today, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Um, I'm located in Clarksville, Indiana, not too far from Louisville, Kentucky, uh, about an hour and a half from uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. I do offer one-on-one -on -one spiritual counsel, life coaching sessions, 
you are interested, feel free to reach out. I offer one-on-one -on -one individual sessions. I, I do family sessions. I do couple sessions. Ooh. God is so faithful, y'all. He is, ooh, wow. And I believe that we will see miracles, but we must stay in position. Hold fast to what we're learning about God daily. We're learning. We're in school daily. We're in the school of faith daily. Ooh, I love God, y'all. He is, wow. So I pray that this word encouraged you on today. If you would like to sow into this word today, my cash app is dollar sign number four. All dolled up. A-L-L-D-O-L-L-E-D-U-P. How do you reach me? Um, you can reach me through, um, ooh, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I am I'm in the glory right now. Um. Hmm. God, I bless your name. Thank you, God. Woo, glory to your name, God. Um, God, I bless your name. Hmm. Many of you are drawn to this broadcast. Um, many of you are drawn to this broadcast. Because your heart is thirsty for the word and the Lord has called you to do a greater work than you've been prepared to do. You've been called to do a greater work than you've been prepared to do. And the Lord wants you to get ready and to prepare. Many of you, you are going to have to stand in the gap in your marriage in this season. You have to do what it is that God has called you to do. Stand in the gap. Many of you are standing in the gap for your children. The Bible says the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. You stay in position as a parent. You stay in position. You are a gatekeeper. It doesn't matter if you're a man. It doesn't matter if you're a woman. The Bible says there's no gender in Christ. We're caught up on can a woman preach? Can a woman lead? Jesus told him like this. He said, are the lame walking? Are the blind seeing? Do you see miracles? Is your life being changed? It doesn't matter if it's a woman or a man. Am I getting free? Is the word of truth real? People of God. Stay connected. Um, all right. So let me tell you how you can get in touch with me. I am I'm in Clarksville, Indiana. I'm the pastor of Makeover Transformation Church. Uh, our church is located at 625 Eastern Boulevard, Clarksville, Indiana, 47129. Our service times are Friday night at 8 p.m., um, Sunday morning at 10 a.m. You can catch us, and that's Eastern Standard Time. You can catch us on, oh, God, I bless your name. You can catch us on um, Facebook at uh, Makeover Transformation Church. At those times, you can catch me on the morning, the morning makeovers we do. I do on the makeover ministry and I also do on TikTok and both of those are called makeover ministry. You also can catch any of the messages on my YouTube channel, which is called makeover ministry. Um, you can catch the full services, the full church services at makeover transformation church page on YouTube. I just put that up. So go like the page, um, subscribe to it and you'll know whenever the full services are being upload it if you want to get in touch with me personally you can uh, email me my email address is a j at makeover m a k e o v a t c a j at makeover t c dot org you can reach out to me that way um God is so faithful. You also can text me. Uh, the ministry phone number to text is 901-550-8517. I'm going to say that one more time. 901-550-8517. So reach out. 
Let's connect. Let's see what God is doing. I am so excited. You don't actually have to be in this area to be a member of Makeover Transformation Church. I believe the vision is so much bigger. We actually are looking for people that want to be a part and that want to uh, join in from wherever you are. The vision is so much bigger, but I'll be sharing that on another day. I love you all, people of God. Have a good day on purpose. If God be for you, he's greater than the world against you. All right. Be encouraged and be strengthened. I'm Apostle Julia, and I'm over and out. Blessings and peace.